Hello and welcome to Castanet's Week in Review. I'm Jen Zielinski. Our top story. Testimony in the first-degree murder trial of Jolan Verma came to a close this week. The jury will begin deliberations after the long weekend. Our reporter, Rogner Hagen, has been following the case and has the latest information. Closing submissions by the Crown and defence took longer than expected, and the jury chose to begin their deliberations following the long weekend. The Crown has admitted that their case hinges on circumstantial evidence, but they are adamant that Joey Verma is the only person with the motive and capability to kill Brittany Irving, whose mother has been in court throughout the proceedings. Verma also had a number of people in attendance for his counsel's closing, who counter the Crown's point, saying that no forensic evidence has ever been found at the scene. The jury will receive their final instructions on Tuesday morning and will then be sequestered until a decision is made. A 28-year-old Vernon man will spend time in a federal prison after pleading guilty to online luring, being a sexual predator, and to the assault of young Okanagan girls. Connor D. was sentenced to 42 months behind bars, followed by three years probation. His victims were between the ages of 11 and 16. A routine traffic stop near High Road in Glenmore led to the uncovering of a counterfeit scheme this week. Following the stop, a search warrant was issued for this notorious drug house on High Road, where items associated with the production of counterfeit currency were seized. Two people have been charged in relation to the incident. Sockeye salmon making their way up the Okanagan River Channel are being watched closer than ever this year. The Okanagan Nation Alliance recently started a trial study in Penticton to determine how many fish are spawning in the channel. The project was undertaken as part of the Alliance's goal to reintroduce the kokanee into the upper portion of the Okanagan River system. This year we're having the tower count as well and also a sonar. So we're actually going to have three estimations of population of nerkids this year because it's actually kokanee and sockeye. And so yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be a great year in terms of, of getting a really good estimation. The study also goes hand in hand with the start of construction of the fish hatchery on Penticton Indian Band land. Well, it can be creepy and confusing, but it's still fun for all ages. The Kelowna corn maze is back for the month of October. Last year, the maze was trashed by vandals on several occasions, causing trouble and heartache for the owners who put in long hours building the labyrinth. We're in and out of there probably four or five times a day, just and even just checking to make sure nobody's pulled anything down during the day. So. Everything goes in in the afternoon, comes out at 11 o'clock at night. This year, the maze is larger than ever. Check it out at 575 Valley Road in Kelowna. Well, that wraps up Castanet's Week in Review. I'm Jen Zielinski. Thanks for watching. Remember to send your news tips to news at castanet.net and follow us on Twitter at, at Castanet News.